In preparation for turning this into a 3D object, we want to change the position and orientation of our mesh. Right now, if we're looking at this, it's basically laying down on the ground, just flat. And I'm going to press the A key and come over to the rotation tool. We're going to be doing this in polygon edit mode, which works just easily. I'm going to rotate that, press 90 on the keyboard, and then release the mouse button. And then I'm going to leave polygon edit mode. And we're going to take note that the origin is right there. And in fact, I'm going to go back into polygon edit mode, and I'm going to have us change that. So I'm going to select that very center vertex. This is sort of the major center section. And I'm going to press that single vertex, press Shift S, and I'm going to do cursor to selected. And then I'm going to leave edit mode again, and we're going to come up to object, set origin to the 3D cursor position. So now we can come over to our transform tab. If this is not up, just press the N key, and then we can just take all three of these values, press zero, and it'll move the object right to the center of our 3D universe right there. Let's come back into the front view. I'm going to leave perspective mode. It's perfectly flat. This is where we want to generate UVs right off the bat, because downstream we're going to do a texture tutorial on this, and we want to have that set up. So we're going to switch over into UV mode, and I just press the period key on the um, numeric keypad. You can see that brings it into center. So let's come back into front view. We're ready to UV map this. And I want to do just a little bit of preparation work because I want the UVs to be projected so that the top and the bottom fit precisely to the UV space. And then I want the rest of it to be centered in the UV space. So we need to come over to our geometry and find the center point right in the middle. So we have our symmetry point left to right, and we have a symmetry point right in the middle, because each of the four panels is the same width. Shift S, cursor to selected, press the tab key, come up to object, set origin to 3D cursor. And that's exactly where the center of our object is for what we need to do. Press Shift and A, and then we're going to add a plane right into the middle. What I want to do is rotate this around the x-axis by 90 degrees, but I need the size to fit precisely to the size of our geometry, so it's fitting top to bottom exactly. Press the N key to bring that panel back up, and there we have the size. So I'm going to press Command-C to copy that. And we're going to come back over to the plane that we've just created, and I'm going to select these two parameters and paste that in, and it snaps exactly. Let's come over, do an apply scale, and we need to merge both of these together so that we can UV map them as a unit. Hold the shift key to add the second object to the selection, which is our primary object, bring up the context menu, and then join them into a unit. Press the tab key to enter polygon edit mode, the A key to select everything, and then we're going to come up to the UV menu, and we're going to do project from view, bounds, and that will fit it exactly into the UV space at the center and maximally fit top to bottom. So I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to come into edge mode, double click this boundary around that we've just created for the plane. I want to delete that. That was just there for construction purposes. So we're going to delete that. Okay. And there is our UV map. The next thing that we need to do is I'm going to come down to the bottom and you know, there's a flap right here that we're, it's going to get folded inside and we're not going to be focusing on the bottom. So I'm not going to worry about this geometry and I'm going to press command and the plus key to expand selection, bring up the context menu, and I'm going to delete those. We're not going to be worrying about those. We're going to fold the bottom flap. And in fact, down here, we're not going to worry about these either. They're going to be folded, and we're not even going to bother trying to fold them into place. So I'm just going to delete those faces just to simplify everything. But they needed to be there, at least the bottom one needed to be there to make sure it was in the UV space correctly. 
The next thing that we're going to do in preparation for something we're going to do downstream in terms of adding an armature is we want to name the flaps down here as a vertex group. So actually I'll start up here. We're going to select these and I want to go all the way up to, in fact, let's do this in vertex mode because it's really a vertex operation right up to that fold line, but I don't want to get the fold line itself. So we'll come up here and we're going to press plus on the vertex groups and I'm going to call this flap dot top and sign. You got to remember to do a sign. And then here I'm going to select the middle one and we want to do that select more, which is command plus. So plus, plus, plus. There we go right up to that vertex fold line plus, and we're going to call this lid dot top and sign. And then here we will get these. This is the other flap. So we're going to do a flap dot left. So we're going to assign that. And then this one will be flap dot right. And then assign. But again, I'm not getting the actual fold vertices. We're getting right up to that. Perfect. So those are in place and we're going to be using those downstream in a couple of different ways. We're now ready to turn this into an official 3D object. We've done a lot of work up to this point to get it ready and now we're ready to start folding it. The first thing that we need to do is find the first fold point and we established up front that we have these lines right here that are the fold points between each of the four segments. So I'm going to select the single vertex, press shift S, and we're going to do a cursor to select it. Next thing is let's come into the front view and I want to select all the geometry that we're going to fold right up to the fold point, but not including the fold point. And then we're going to switch over to the rotation tool, press period, and then we're going to have the pivot go to the 3D cursor location. Begin rotating around the Z axis and then just type in 90 and it'll snap it to 90 degrees. The next thing that we need to do is come over and do the next thing to the next segment, essentially minus one of the fold segments. Press shift S, cursor to active, it moves the cursor and the widget there, the pivot as it's called, marquee up to, but not including, the fold line. And then we're going to rotate one more time, type in 90, and that will snap that like that. Now the next one we're going to do a consideration on by thinking about the fact that we're going to end up modeling a flap that's going to connect to the inside. We don't necessarily need to do it, but it's going to be a good way of demonstrating how to do some extra UV mapping. So uh, what I will do is select that vertex, which is at the fold point, shift S, cursor to selected, active would also work. And then I'm going to press option alt Z to go back into x-ray mode and select through. I, I've just gotten into a habit of doing that by practice. I found every now and then it doesn't always select everything. It will only select front facing geometry when you're in non x-ray mode. And I found that sometimes it doesn't always select everything quite right. So I'll press option Z again, rotate 90. And there we have it folded and it matches up exactly. But let's say that we were wanting to have this be a little bit more realistic where there's actually a flap of paper here that gets glued to this backside and we want to model that and we want to take that into consideration. So I will undo and let's come over here and take a look at this back in the front view. I'm going to select those vertices and I want to move them in just a little bit. So I'm going to press the G key and then X 
to move those in just a little bit. This is the benefit of just invoking the transform tools directly using those like the G key as an example, as opposed to going over and directly selecting the tool because it leaves the widget where it is and you don't have to worry about where the widget is. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come over into edge mode and I want to extrude that edge. So we would come up to the edge menu and we would extrude, but I want to extrude along the Y direction. So I'm gonna press the Y key and I'm gonna just extrude a little bit one time and then I'm going to press the E key to do another extrude pressing the Y key and I'm just going to go out kind of an arbitrary distance enough of a flap that would form a good glue point and then I'll do it one more time E Y and then pull out just a little bit and that's going to be that'll function but what we've done now is we've added extra geometry that's not been included in the UV map. So let's go over and get this integrated properly into the UV map. Let's come back into UV editing now. and We're going to rotate the view so we can gain access to that flap that we've just modeled, Option Z. And if I press the A key, we can see the original UV data that we've generated. And the new geometry that gets extruded is actually there, but it's just all the vertices are of the new newly created geometry are just placed in exactly where the parent original vertices were. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have a select these edge loops by just double clicking on an edge between two polygons. You can see those get selected right there. We want to actually generate those as proper UVs. So I'm going to come up here to the UV editor and we're just going to invoke unwrap and it'll produce those, but the scale isn't right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have us just select these. I'm going to press the G key and then X and I'll just move these off to the side. And then I'll press the A key over here in the 3D viewport so we can see everything. And what I want to do is I want to come over and select the edge that I want to get stitched to. So we're going to switch over here into edge mode and I'm going to marquee around this edge. This is the edge where the where those polygons were generated from. So now we just come over up to the UV menu and we invoke the stitch function and it will move those over. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to switch back over into vertex mode here because it's a little bit easier to see and we want to get this synced up to the correct size. So the way we do that is I want to come over to all of the vertices or most of the vertices that are of the correct position and orientation. They're exactly where we want them to be. And I'm going to select those carefully right up to that point. Bring up the context menu and we're going to pin those. We don't want those to change at all. And then select everything bring up the context menu and invoke the unwrap and it will only unwrap and sync those into place to match up. It's awesome. And then we can just come over a key to select everything and we can unpin and those are generated in place. So now we're ready to come back over. I'm going to move back to modeling and we're going to rotate. We need to select I'm going to press Option Z to go back into that X-ray mode. Select everything that we want to rotate, but it's gotten too much. So I'm going to go back into vertex mode here and get everything but that fold line. There we go. Option Z to go back out of X-ray. Rotate this 90. Just type in 90 and that'll rotate that in perfectly. And then that's in place. Now we're going to be adding thickness to this, so I'm not worried if it's sitting up exactly on here. In fact, I want there to be a bit of a gap for right now.